In mathematical physics, a closed time-like curve is a world line in a Lorentzian manifold of immaterial particle in spacetime that is closed, returning to its starting point. This possibility was discovered by Kurt Gödel in 1949 who discovered a solution to the equations of general relativity allowing CTCs known as the Gödel metric, and since then other GR solutions containing CTCs have been found, such as the Tipler cylinder and traversable wormholes. If CTCs exist, their existence would seem to imply at least the theoretical possibility of time travel backwards in time, raising the specter of the grandfather paradox, although the Novikov self-consistency principle seems to show that such paradoxes could be avoided. Some physicists speculate that the CTCs which appear in certain GR solutions might be ruled out by a future theory of quantum gravity which would replace GR an idea which Stephen Hawking has labeled the chronology protection conjecture. Others note that if every closed time-like curve in a given space-time passes through an event horizon, a property which can be called chronological censorship, then that space-time with event horizons excised would still be causally well-behaved and an observer might not be able to detect the causal violation. Light cones when discussing the evolution of a system in general relativity, or more specifically Minkowski space, physicists often refer to a light cone. A light cone represents any possible future evolution of an object given its current state, or every possible location given its current location. An object's possible future locations are limited by the speed that the object can move, which is at best the speed of light. For instance, an object located at position P at time t0 can only move to locations within C by time t1. This is commonly represented on a graph with physical locations along the horizontal axis and time running vertically, with units of for time and court for space. Light cones in this representation appear as lines at 45 degrees centered on the object, as light travels at poor. On such a diagram, every possible future location of the object lies within the cone. Additionally, every space location has a future time, implying that an object may stay at any location in space indefinitely. Any single point on such a diagram is known as an event. Separate events are considered to be time-like if they are separated across the time axis, or space-like if they differ along the space axis. If the object were in free fall, it would travel up the t-axis. If it accelerates, it moves across the x-axis as well. The actual path an object takes through space-time, as opposed to the ones it could take, is known as the world linear. Another definition is that the light cone represents all possible world lines. In simple examples of space-time metrics, the light cone is directed forward in time. In these spacetimes, the world lines of physical objects are, by definition, time-like. However, this orientation is only true of locally flat spacetimes. In curved spacetimes, the light cone will be tilted along the spacetime's geodesic. For instance, while moving in the vicinity of a star, the star's gravity will pull on the object, affecting its world linear, so its possible future positions lie closer to the star. This appears as a slightly tilted light cone on the corresponding spacetime diagram. An object in free fall in this circumstance continues to move along its local axis, but to an external observer it appears it is accelerating in space as well, a common situation if the object is in orbit, for instance. In extreme examples, in spacetimes with suitably high curvature metrics, the light cone can be tilted beyond 45 degrees. That means there are potential future positions from the object's frame of reference that are space-like separated to observers in an external rest frame. From this outside viewpoint, the object can move instantaneously through space. In these situations the object would have to move, since its present spatial location would not be in its own future light cone. Additionally, with enough of a tilt, there are event locations that lie in the past, as seen from the outside. 
with a suitable movement of what appears to it its own space axis, the object appears to travel though time is seen externally. A closed time-like curve can be created if a series of such light cones are set up so as to loop back on themselves. So it would be possible for an object to move around this loop and return to the same place and time that it started. An object in such an orbit would repeatedly return to the same point in space-time if it stays in free fall. Returning to the original space-time location would be only one possibility. The object's future light cone would include space-time points both forwards and backwards in time, and so it should be possible for the object to engage in time travel under these conditions. General Relativity CTCs appear in locally unobjectionable exact solutions to the Einstein field equation of general relativity, including some of the most important solutions. These include the Missner space, the Kerr vacuum, the interior of a rotating BTZ black hole, the Van Stockham dust, the Gödel lambda dust, the Tipler cylinder. Bonner Stedman solutions describing laboratory situations such as two spinning balls. J. Richard Gott has proposed a mechanism for creating CTCs using cosmic strings. Some of these examples are, like the Tipler cylinder, rather artificial. Most physicists feel that CTCs in such solutions are artifacts. Consequences One feature of a CTC is that it opens the possibility of a world leaner which is not connected to earlier times, and so the existence of events that cannot be traced to an earlier cause. Ordinarily, causality demands that each event in space-time is preceded by its cause in every rest frame. This principle is critical in determinism, which in the language of general relativity states complete knowledge of the universe on a space-like Cauchy surface can be used to calculate the complete state of the rest of spacetime. However, in a CTC, causality breaks down, because an event can be simultaneous with its cause. In some sense an event may be able to cause itself. It is impossible to determine based only on knowledge of the past whether or not something exists in the CTC that can interfere with other objects in space-time. A CTC therefore results in a Cauchy horizon, and a region of space-time that cannot be predicted from perfect knowledge of some past time. No CTC can be continuously deformed as a CTC to a point, as the manifold would not be causally well behaved at that point. The topological feature which prevents the CTC from being deformed to a point is known as a time-like topological feature. Existence of CTCs places restrictions on physically allowable states of matter-energy fields in the universe. Propagating a field configuration along the family of closed time-like world lines must eventually result in the state that is identical to the original one. This has been explored by some scientists as a possible approach towards disproving the existence of CTCs. Existence of CTCs implies also equivalence of quantum and classical computation. Contractible versus non-contractible. There are two classes of CTCs. We have CTCs contractible to a point, and we have CTCs which are not contractible. For the latter, we can always go to the universal covering space, and re-establish causality. For the former, such a procedure is not possible. No closed time-like curve is contractible to a point by a time-like homotopy among time-like curves, as that point would not be causally well behaved. Cauchy horizon. The chronology violating set is the set of points through which CTCs pass. The boundary of this set is the Cauchy horizon. The Cauchy horizon is generated by closed null geodesics. Associated with each closed null geodesic is a redshift factor describing the rescaling of the rate of change of the affine parameter around a loop. Because of this redshift factor, the affine parameter terminates at a finite value after infinitely many revolutions because the geometric series converges. 